like four cups, and then I had a uh, triple shots. All right, so Alex is our here. Let me get a shot of you from. What are you doing? What? My mom wants me to unlock my vehicle so that she can. Is put... she gonna come in while we're doing oh this? God, well, she knows we're doing this, so she's like, I'll just throw it in my car. Okay. So what? she. I just gotta get. Yeah, I think you need to but calm down. <laughs> like, we're not trying to do anything here. It's fine. You're listening to 834's award-winning podcast, The Happy Hour Hustle. We offer listeners the chance to experience the musings or ramblings, depending on how many glasses of wine she's had, of the one and only Kimberly J. Bodie as she interviews notable clients, upstanding community members, and random passerby. Nominations and awards pending. Oh, great, yeah. Yes! Everyone loves okay. that. Um, so, all right, are we starting? When you're ready, just stop and play. Here. Okay. There you go. All right, Kaden, it's our first happy hour hustle. So, yeah, we're finally launching a podcast, which, by the way, was my idea back in, like, 2006, and now everyone has done it, so now it doesn't seem all that original. Yeah, you're cool, buddy. But we're doing it <laughs> now. Okay, so the name of this is obviously Happy Hour Hustle, which um, – really does relay our love of all things booze and drinking. So to start out, I think we should both, well, everyone knows what my favorite drink is, but what is your favorite cocktail? Uh, it probably depends on the day. No, it doesn't. Um, okay, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, whiskey and Coke all day yeah. long. Yeah. It's like a 12-year-old. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So today. So, well, actually, let's go back. Happy Hour Hustle. We're going to be talking small business trends. We're going to also be talking um, marketing trends because obviously we're an integrated communications firm. Um, And then, you know, anything that's going on on the national level that really does apply to us on the local level. So ideally, we hope this is entertaining. Um, If not, you can unsubscribe. But first, you must subscribe. That's real important. Um, I'm not even sure where this is going to be airing, but we'll let you know that in the email or whatever. So today we're going to talk about email marketing, which is one of my most favorite subjects. How about some enthusiasm there? <laughs> yeah, Any? email marketing. Perfect, Great. thanks. Okay, so obviously it is holiday season, which is my most favorite time of the year. And everyone is getting gazillions. I just gazillions. rolled my eyes. You see that, but I yeah, totally you can't. rolled my eyes. Gazillions and gazillions of emails. In fact, I counted my emails, my promotional emails, and I had by 2 o'clock today over 62. Today? Today. Just 62 from retailers because I like to shop and they know this. So... The biggest thing is for whether you are a B2C or a B2B, how are you actually going to stand out from the crowd? And we were just actually discussing, you know, um, our team was discussing an article by the Wall Street Journal that talked about how, you know, a lot of emails for either retailers, and we're also going to tie it to B2B, are misfiring and are not effective. And we want to talk a little bit about why they're not effective. So kind of start out and give an overview maybe of just email marketing and how ideally it should be used. Yeah, so, um, you know, the interesting stat uh, at the top of the article says that nearly 90% of organizations say they are focused on personalizing customer experiences, yet only 40% of shoppers say the information they get from retailers is relevant. Um, So obviously, email marketing is a great way to connect with your audience. It's very cost effective. and it's almost kind of like when email marketing started, I don't know, 10 years ago to be a um, you know, really po- prominent piece of the communications puzzle. Um, everyone kind of realized that, hey, this is easy to do this and connect with all these people and we can just send out as many emails as we want. Well, and I think at the <laughs> time too, a lot of people were just doing email newsletters. So yep. it was just like a compilation, compilation of different news or different things going on within their organization. Sometimes, you know, trends within their industry, but not targeted. And, and you know, I think that's what's really interesting about this topic that we're, we're talking about today because, you know, email marketing should be working for, for you and help drive leads or help drive sales. But if you're not tailoring that and you're not taking the time to be very targeted, then, you know, essentially it's just throwing, am I allowed to swear here, shit against the wall and hoping it sticks. <laughs> no, it definitely is. And, um, you know, I, I give a lot of companies credit for trying to deliver targeted communications um, and leveraging what we call segmentation, uh, which is basically we're going to take this big list of 50,000 people and we're going to divide it up based on. Uh, some demographic criteria, so job role, industry, age, uh, et cetera. Um, And then we're going to say deliver our same email newsletter, but it's going to look a little bit different for men than it is for women. 
Um, that's definitely a start, uh, but you know, the, the real, um, the real place that you win with email marketing is actually personalization. So based on user behavior and what they're doing and who they are instead of just what they are. And I think it's important to no note there too, if you're only going to rely on segmentation, the article goes on to state that, you know, if you were looking at say Ozzy Osbourne and Prince Charles, who are both British and in their late sixties, um, you know, that's how you can segment it. So you're segmenting your list based on that, you know, old British guys that are 60, maybe they're not old, but you know what I mean? And so they aren't going to be, you know, those are two very different individuals and they're not going to be interested in the same thing. And that's really where the personalization comes in. Yeah, definitely. So the personalization really looks at the differences instead of the similarities, which is, which is interesting. Um, so again, both of those interest or individuals may fit those same demographic profiles, but can be looking for totally different things. Maybe uh, one of them wants to save costs, the other one wants to save money, or sorry, save time. Um, one of them may be on an iPhone looking Side at their note, email. Is Prince Charles really only in his 60s? That guy looks like he's 100 he years old. Is. Anyway, go on. iPhone. They're Recal working cream. on their iPhone right now, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, one of them may be on an iPhone, one of them may be on an Android, one of them may be using Gmail, and the other one using Outlook. So um, it really is about first of all, segmenting that list, but then within those segments, how are you talking to people differently based on who they are and what they're doing and what they're looking for? Talk a little bit about, um, so say like I'm on Ann Taylor, you know, not a place I shop often or Never. ever. Um, and I'm looking at dresses and maybe I put a few in my cart. Yep. And what happens next or what should happen next? <laughs> So ideally, uh, you have shoppers who put something in their cart, then they leave without checking out. Um, ideally, you would get a follow-up email saying, hey, you forgot about this great dress that you picked out. It would look stunning on you. Here's 10% off. Yeah, the kissing up's not going to work, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Stunning. <laughs> uh, so one example in the article is actually, I thought it was quite humorous if someone was on um, on a website looking at black boots, and then the next day they received an email about dresses. Um, so example, the misfire there. Obviously, they were looking at boots. They were interested in purchasing boots. Um, if they had received an email for you know 10% off those boots 24 hours later, they would, probably would have been more likely to convert uh, than someone who or then if they received an email about dresses. So talk about the technical side about it, of it though, because um, pretend that the listeners are not smart like me. And so, yeah, that makes sense. Like, great, I'm looking at boots. And then like, I, maybe I get an email the next day or, or later that day and it says, hey, those boots that you're looking at are now on sale. How does that actually work? Like behind? So the data is really the most important piece of all of that. Um, and if you've met us in person or heard one of our sales pitches, you hear how much we love data uh, at 834. And this is uh, no exception here. So the data is really what drives all of it and can, I think, be the most intimidating for people to set up. I mean, first you have to think through the uh, audience journey, think, through, think about your buyers, think about what behavior makes sense to track. Um, you need to set up your website so that it can you know, A, aid those users in taking those routes, and then B, track it once they do. You gotta set up your Google Analytics, you've gotta set up your CRM system, your, you know, MailChimp or whatever sort of email platform that you're using. So there are a lot of different pieces from a technical standpoint uh, that need to be configured, and I think that can probably overwhelm people. What are, um, talk a little bit, so you said MailChimp, yeah. um, and that is, that's an email program that we use personally, and we also recommend to a lot of our clients that they use. Why would you suggest MailChimp? Um, MailChimp is very powerful when it comes to data. Um, all the stuff that we're talking about can be tracked there. Um, it's also, you know, pretty easy to use from a design perspective. Uh, so it doesn't take um, an HTML expert to build a, a sweet looking template. Oh, my ice just popped. Um, okay, so we're talking. Can you? I would like to get that on on the sound <laughs> track. That would be amazing. Okay, so we talked a little bit B two C. Can you please explain how this relates yeah. to B two B? So, like for a company like Eight Thirty Four or a company like a law firm. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, a lot of the examples out there, you know, that you'll find when you look at personalizing emails definitely apply uh, primarily to. B to C, you know, everyone thinks that that's the most sexiest, the you know more fun side of it. Uh, but it definitely. Well, when you like shopping, it is. So I wouldn't know. Um, Fair. It, it works just as well for B to C, though. Um, you know, there's still plenty of behavior that you can track. Um, so maybe it's not an abandoned shopping cart. Maybe it's they downloaded this case study talking about how you just improved your supply chain. Um, 
Maybe they attended a specific event. Maybe they signed up for your email, but not just signed up for it, but they signed up for it on this particular page, indicating that whatever the content was on that page was something they were interested in. Uh, so there's definitely plenty of applications uh, on the B2C side as well. This seems like it would take a lot of time. Is that why people hire? That's probably why they hire us. Mm -hmm. Fair. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, because you're talking about all these different systems, I mean, we're talking about looking at the analytics on the website. Yep. We're talking about, you know, then integrating that into the mail, uh, the email program that you're using. And then, you know, you have to look at it from a mobile perspective. And then there's apps. We haven't even talked about apps. I mean, how do people not become overwhelmed with this? What do you suggest is like maybe their first, the first step they take? Calling 834. Oh, <laughs> um, first step they take, I mean, the first step is always going to be, you know, we preach this here too, the strategy. So the first step, I mean, before you set up data, um, tracking tools or anything like that, you've got to know what you want to track. Uh, so the first piece is, like I said, going to be sitting down, really thinking through that audience journey, thinking about who those people are, um, how they're accessing you, what they're looking for, what their pain points are. Um, and then from there, I mean, start to identify those, those goals. Um, set that up on your Google Analytics. Uh, that's probably the first place. And then you're going to need an email tool. Uh, again, we recommend MailChimp, uh, but there's plenty of options out there. Um, HubSpot has a great platform if you can afford it. Yeah, um, that's not real affordable <laughs> for small businesses. Uh, but yeah, plenty of options out there. But start with a strategy, always. And give it a, a few ideas or give an example of a couple goals that say, um, well, a logistics company would have. Um, goals for a logistics company. So, I mean, lead generation is always key, right? Um, and in order to use email marketing to improve that lead generation, personalization is important. Um, again, think about that audience. Some of their potential clients may be um, really just too busy, and they need they need someone to take some um, you know tasks off their hands. Some of them may be looking to cut costs. Some of them may be looking to get into a different market. Um, so again, think about those uh, pain points that your audience may have, and it all comes back again to um, content as well. So create relevant content, um, and then use email marketing as a tool to to capture those leads. Well, and good design too. I mean, I Never know hurts. that that the the headline for an email is going to grab my attention first, and so spend some time on that. Spend some time on like customizing that, and and you know what is going to make somebody click that open. Um, yeah. And then once it is open, is it is it clear what the, the the action or the behavior you want them to to take? Yeah, I'm glad you said headline too, because the other thing with this is that once you have the data in place, you know it may sound like well shit. Now I have to create like seven thousand different email templates to send out based on every little person. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's really not the case. You can take the same basics of the email and, to Kim's point, you know, tailor the headline, tailor the greetings, tailor an image that's used, tailor the individual white paper you feature in there. You know, tailor those little specific pieces to speak to the audience. It doesn't mean you have to create 7,000 emails. Um, so it's really not that hard once you actually have the data in place and the structure set up. So I think our big takeaways today when we talk about email marketing is one, if you're not doing it, you should be. Um, find an email program that's going to work for you. I, you know, we, we really plugged MailChimp and if they would like to sponsor this podcast, I mean, we're, we're open to it, but I would say probably because it's very user friendly, the data is just phenomenal on it. I mean, you can see who's opened it. You can see who's forwarded it on. You can see how many times they've opened it. You can obviously see who's unsubscribed. I mean, there's just so, I mean, it's just a really deep dive into it. And you can actually see like they're, you know, if you haven't integrated into your analytics on your website, right, you can yep. kind of see where they've gone from that email yep. onto your website. Yep. That's pretty cool too. And also a little um, creepy, but. So MailChimp we love. Plus, if you have 2,000 or under subscribers, it's free. Um, and and at, even at its top level, I think it's only like $55 or something. Yeah. So a month. Affordable. Um, very affordable. Uh, I think so the other thing is, obviously, first, please do email marketing. Um, two, you should always be looking at your data. Uh, you know, Caden's always available to answer questions as it relates to what does this even mean. We have some really great blogs too on 834design.com that that do more of a deep dive into, you know, looking at your analytics platform or dashboard and then trying to figure out what exactly it's telling you. And then I would say third, everything you do marketing-wise, you should be personalizing anyways. We live in a digital age, and unfortunately, that means you're going to have to work a lot harder for that sale or that lead. Um, 
you know, so again, email marketing is important, personalize it. And what was the other thing? Oh, look at your data all the time. Data. Always. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Kaden? <laughs> uh, yeah, again, personalizing, you know, the, the one takeaway that I always find most um, engaging with this topic is that while a lot of people think about segmentation, I mean, it really goes above and beyond that. So it's not what's similar between people, but it actually is what's different. Great. While you are listening to the Happy Hour Hustle, we're so happy that you are here for our very first podcast. I hope you do come back um, or subscribe or share with a friend or join us. You know, we might set up an audience area where you can watch us and drink. So, and cheers, Caden. Cheers. Yay.